Hi again, it's Dana. I'm coming back at you with 411 on 911, and this week we have Rick with us. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here, right? Absolutely. Kind of, sort of. Anyways, today we're going to be discussing custody issues. This is our last part of a three-part episode. This is a big one, and uh, we've got a wonderful guy to take care of it, so let's just go ahead and get him. Right. Um, custody issues are very tough calls, I think. Absolutely. Um, they're one of the more complicated things we have to deal with. We're combining the civil issues that you've been discussing, as well as, in some cases, violations of court orders, which brings it, the police involved in that kind of situations. Um, in any case, there's a lot of emotions involved. We have parents, we have children, and you know that's that's where we come in. We're trying to do what's right to enforce the court orders when they're in place, or at the very least, do what's right for the child. Which uh, can be sometimes very hard to do, uh, especially when you've got parents and oftentimes extended family members who are all fighting amongst themselves over this. Yeah, we'll have um, ex-husbands, ex-wives, girlfriends, um, grandmothers and grandfathers who've been given custody and it's very emotionally charged. There, there was love at some point involved in this and it could be that they still care about each other and things just went bad or it could be that everything just went terrible for them. Uh, in any case, it all comes down to if there's a court order involved, the judge is doing what they believe is best for the child. If there's not a court order, again, that's what we're doing. We're trying to keep everybody rational, keep everyone civil, and do the right thing for the child. Do the right thing for the child. That's what we need to remember through this whole entire thing. Yeah. So how does the process work within regards to the exchange of the child as far as the police department goes? Again, if there is no court ordered custody on file, we are just going to be there as a mediating presence. Ideally, you've already try to make the exchange you've already gone over to you know the neutral restaurant that you normally go to or the parking lot that you consider safe ground for everyone to go to uh, a lot of times going to one home or another can bring a little bit of emotion in there it's whatever works for them whatever they you, whatever you agree on um, and if there is no court order custody we will just go there and again actually the mediating presence we'll try and keep everyone calm and civil and in most cases that's all that's needed but if there is a court ordered custody on file what we need to do is actually have the parent with that paperwork in hand. The officer needs to be able to review it, look at it and say, everything's in order. This is the correct date. This is the correct time. Here's the exchange location. They get very specific as to dates and times and hours because when it comes to the point when, when the court has to be involved, then clearly the civil process is broken down. The parents can't get along any longer, so they needed someone else to, to set the rules for them. So that's what we come in there to do. We come in there to help set the rules. Um, we'll go out to the location with the parent if, if needed. Sometimes we have to go to the other parent's house if they are refusing, and then we, again, act as a mediating presence, but we are there to enforce the court order. And as long as the child is not in danger, and again, we do have people who show up sometimes at two o'clock in the morning, you know, bashing their hand, it's, well, it's my date, it's my time, I want my child now. And there's times we'll say, you know, I get it, I understand this is your time and your rights, but you are traumatizing your child. Right. And we, again, we will sometimes not give you the answer you want if it is not in the best interest of the child involved. And sometimes when we have teenage children involved as well, a 14, 15 year old, you know, they have their own opinions. Yeah. They don't want to go with mom, they don't want to go with dad, they, they want to stay where they are and it gets complicated. It's tricky. It, it is, and it's, it's a very tough job for the officers to deal with because they are dealing with nothing but emotions at that point. They have a rule that they're supposed to be following, but everyone has a stake in this, and it, it gets, it's tough. Okay, so just a couple of quick follow-up questions. If, um, I'll go back to this uh, example with my husband. Say we break up, he's got the sum. I have a court, we, we have the court document in hand, um, I go to the location, he's not there. I cannot track him down anywhere. Mm -hmm. Is there any recourse for me, like report-wise or anything that I can do? We usually recommend people to file either on our online system, the sacpd.org, which you should know by now, and or one of our stations to file a report for either harassment, if they believe this is being done intentionally, or if there's some sort of threat being involved in as well. But the most important thing is to just get that on file, get a date and a time, that establishes what's called a pattern of behavior. So if this happens every single Friday night at five o'clock, 
one half says, well, I'm not coming to drop the child off. You've got to come to my house or you've got to come somewhere else or well, they're with grandma for a couple of hours and it happens every single week. It establishes that pattern of behavior. So when you go back to family court, you can go to the judge and say, your honor, we've been doing our best to live up to the, the court order you've set. My ex is not following up on that. The judge may completely change the court order custody. But the important thing is to document everything. Okay, that makes sense. So basically like a violation of a, of a court order. And that would be if I live in the city of Sacramento, right? Correct. Okay. The county has their own, own issues. Elk Grove has their own issues. Just if you're within the city limits, you would file it on our website. And if you are you know, in, your other, in your jurisdiction, file it locally. Okay, then let's say I've got my court order. Uh, I go to the agreed upon location. The father is there. He's just not in good mood and does not want to exchange my son with me at this point. Um, I have my, like I said, I have my paperwork with me. I can call you. You guys would come out and... Correct. We would review the paperwork, okay. make sure that everything is in order. And then if it is, we will stand by and say, sir, you're in violation of the order. You need to hand the child over. Okay. And in most cases, when the officers are there, most people realize, okay, they're being serious. Okay, I have to follow through with this. And some people honestly do it just to be petty. They do it as their way of getting one extra little dig. And again, that's, we go back to the first question, all the emotions, and that is where it gets, it gets complicated. Okay, so it sounds like the bottom line here is that SPD is here to help. Absolutely. Um, if needed for any type of custody issues, but officers must follow the law. They must follow this court document from a judge, and we must always put the children first. Absolutely, children come first, no matter what else is going on, no matter what arguments or emotions you may have, your child's best interest is what we are concerned about. Okay, it all makes perfect sense. Um, this is the final part of our three-part series. We hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, Rick, you did a fabulous job. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, if you have any questions or comments, definitely put them in our comment section. We will also post the phone number and address of the Family Court Services. And we do appreciate you being with us uh, for this whole entire three-part series, okay? Thank you. Take care, bye-bye.